There's always a harvest, and thank God we, we have laborers, you know, we have our student friars, you know, who are being supported and encouraged, and they're going to take care of uh, the harvest uh, this year and years to come, and, uh, and we are so blessed, and uh, it's good to be a part of them, you know, to work with them, and they bring new life, new blood, new enthusiasm to, to the work that we're doing. And, uh, so the harvest is great, and the laborers are a few, but we have good laborers. I was studying civil engineering at Colorado State University and uh, I just got to a point in my life around the, the time of 9-11 um, asking questions, uh, really important questions about what my life is about, um, what I was created for, what the, the meaning of life was. And for me, life is in God and so, so my sense of vocation it was that realization that I know what death is about, I know what unhappiness is about, I've been there, I can do that anytime I want. But I think that there's life here. Um, and so for me it was about that. It wasn't about so much like a job or a ministry or a whatever. It was about there's life here for me. I was kind of away from the faith. And I, um, I, I read these books on, on the, our Blessed Mother and decided you know, to visit uh, Medjugorje. And so I went there with my mom right after September 11th. Just had a powerful, powerful experience there of God's mercy and God's love. It's like intoxicating almost when you sense that love and it's like, that's what I want. That, I, don't, I don't want anything else in life, just that. I want to know that and I want to live that and I want to bring that to others. My late 30s, I went through a kind of a deep conversion. And uh, at the time I was working as a truck driver after college and uh, some time in the military, but that gave me a lot of time to think and read and reconnect with my faith. And, and what I really, really liked was the uh, the combination of contemplative prayer and living among the poor in ministry. To me, it, uh, what really attracted me about the Capuchins is it was combined all of that. I got my undergrad in computer engineering and um, worked for three years doing that. All the, all the while, I was becoming more and more involved at the student center um, until the priest called me one day and said, hey, I've got a job for you if you want it. And so it was kind of a a wake-up call to me to consider vo my vocation again. Um, so I went to work for him for two years and did work with college students and then faculty and staff at the university with retreats, classes, that kind of stuff. And then that was my, my last stop before I put on the browns. It's the most important thing I feel like the Capuchins are, in a sense, is beyond what they do, um, beyond what we do. And that's been hard for me because I feel I'm a doer and my family, we're, we're doers and so being something is kind of new to me. And so being a person of prayer, being a person of faith, um, letting my life witness rather than letting my deeds alone witness is something that I feel like the Capuchins have taught me. I don't think it's a coincidence that Christ called uh, fishermen to be disciples. For me, um, you know, that's one of the biggest surprises of, of being a, a friend of Christ is, you know, there's, there's a lot of parallels in the spiritual life uh, to fly fishing. Um, I've become a fisher of men in so many ways, you know, walking in the mall or walking down the 16th Street Mall or walking down in the Five Points of Denver. Uh, people see us in our, in our robes and they come up and talk to us. And um, so, there, you know, there's a dynamic process involved in, in evangelization. Someone who has a real deep contemplative experience of the Lord and becomes an instrument of the Lord for others, his hands, his feet, um, his words to others. And not about me, but the Lord working through me and um, to make me an instrument of bringing his good news to others. And that, that's my goal as a Capuchin. For the last three years, doing catechesis and uh, teaching confirmation classes to high school kids at Annunciation uh, Parish here in Denver. And it's been, for me, incredible. Um, one of the things, like appearing in Medjugorje, was help the youth, help the youth, protect the youth. For the youth growing up today, I think it's so difficult because there's so many dangers, spiritually, materially, I mean, that, that many people in the past growing up didn't face. And, you know, but I think they're all hungry for truth, just like everybody is. And, 
And the more you talk about God's love to them and God's mercy and you know, that God is calling them to holiness and God's calling them to a relationship, and you still slowly start to see something come awake inside of them, and it's powerful to see that happen. And you know it's not, it's nothing you're doing. You know that you know, God's grace is working, and that's exciting to see. I think religious formation is tremendous human formation as well. It's a tremendous experience of growing into just being a person. Uh, because my own kind of background, my own growing up, and my own culture has shaped me to be pretty selfish and to be um, yeah, self-seeking and, and all sorts of things. And so those, those things get worked out in, in community and in prayer and all of these things. And so I think I've grown just as a human being, uh, just an, in the ability to be kind and compassionate um, and find joy in, in the freedom of poverty for instance, in the freedom of service, in the incredible way that God is present in so many people. So for me, I think I've grown in my appreciation of the, the holiness of everyday life. Uh, what would I most like to be remembered for? Uh, being a man of prayer and being loving towards others. I responded uh, to the call of Christ so that others could come to know that same love that I found in Jesus Christ. My willingness to help um, anybody that asks simple or complex question, I think, I think my generosity is something I hope um, can be inspiring. That I've always tried to be honest with other people and, and honest with them about my own struggles. And I think I'd like to be remembered for maybe two things. Uh, one, I'd like to be remembered as a real man, like a very real man in an unreal world sometimes, um, a real authentic person. Um, and I think I would also like to be remembered as somebody who is able to show others how much they're loved by God. Because that's what it's about for us, you know, it's not about how good we are, it's about how good God is. And God is amazingly present in a lot of people and they don't know it. Well, today I had Mass with the, the student friars, the, the professed friars who are in various years of their training. And, and as I looked at them celebrating, as I was celebrating the Mass and looked at them, I said, this is the future, you know, to spread the good news and, and to, you know, to take care of the harvest out there. Oh.